deliver for the rest of the children in New Zealand. Question number 11, Jonathan Young. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Energy and Resources and asks, when she was briefed by the US company Eight Rivers on its proposal to produce abundant hydrogen and urea alongside large-scale carbon capture and storage in Taranaki, did she think they made a compelling case for ensuring New Zealand's domestic electricity requirements, particularly for dry year cover? Mr. Speaker. Dr. Megan Boyce. Mr Speaker, as the member notes, I recently met with representatives of Eight Rivers. As Energy and Resources Minister, I meet a wide range of stakeholders. At the meeting with Eight Rivers, I listened to what they had to say. I explained that the government has set very clear signals around policy settings and also explained to them that I, as I am not a PGF minister, I wouldn't be discussing anything related to their application. As for their case, if they choose to proceed, this is one of the issues that would no doubt be explored within the proposed feasibility study for the project and all other commercial deliberations. I do note that I made it my business in this portfolio to meet with a broad range of stakeholders in the sector, such as Greenpeace, who I met with last week, and not just the narrow vested interests, as clearly happened under previous ministers. Point of order, sir. Um, the minister, Young. Point of order, sir. The minister did not attempt to answer the second part of this question regarding uh, ensuring domestic electricity requirements and dry year cover. Right. I, I think she effectively confirmed that she didn't. Well, yeah. right. If I've <laughs> misinterpreted the member. Yes, I did. What I, said, what I went through for the member in terms of addressing that question is um, what I did at the meeting and why it is um, the considerations that I need to take into account and what I informed them of. I'm not, I wasn't convinced either way or the other. That was not my job in the meeting. What's the question? Uh, I, I stand by what I said. Thank you, uh, sir. Jonathan Young. Thank you, sir. Why does she keep promoting through answers and interviews a Taupo project that manufactures hydrogen from a geothermal power station which emits 28,000 tonnes of CO2 a year, while she shows no or little enthusiasm for a Taranaki project that would manufacture hydrogen with zero emissions? Mr Speaker, I reject the premise of that question. Well, if the minister appears to support the outcome of supporting dry year cover through hydrogen, as she has stated time and again, how is it appropriate to ban new exploration for natural gas if a technology exists to manufacture hydrogen and generate electricity with zero emissions? Mr Speaker, as I've previously said to the member in this House, that actually what the proposal um, that Eight Rivers is talking about is a feasibility study. Um, it's not commercial production. That actually the very notion of carbon capture and storage is something the industry has been talking about for a number of years, but this is still at the feasibility stage. I think the member is getting ahead of himself and he needs to read what the application is actually about. Why does she continue to say that people are talking about carbon capture and storage for a long time and that it requires a large amount of investment when international companies that have exploration permits in New Zealand have been successfully utilising carbon capture and storage for over 20 years? And why doesn't she come into the 21st century and support that technology? Mr Speaker, the, key, the reason I keep saying that people have been talking about this for a long period of time is because they have. Question number 12, the Honourable Tim McIndoe. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and Merry Christmas to you.